This is the Project In Between podcast. My name is Christy. I'm a nurse and behavioural scientist. On this podcast, we share tips and stories of healing, health and wellness and everything in between to help you navigate stress, trauma and grief. So today I have with me Steph. Hi, Steph. Thank you for Hello. coming on. Thank you for, thank you for sharing your space with me. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so Steph is an, I can never say an anesthesia properly. So an anesthesia, <laughs> could you say it for me? Let me let me let me give you two different things. We actually uh, changed the the language two years ago to nurse anesthesiologist because we basically do a lot of the pretty much the same thing. Although <laughs> there might be some arguments from the MDs, but if if you're from England, it's so much easier to say. In the UK, they say not nurse anesthetist, which just doesn't roll off the tongue. No, it doesn't. But nurse anesthetist. Hmm. Nurse anesthetist, yes. It's, yeah. the, it's the, that last little bit to try and draw it, it out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so Steph's been nursing, or she was nursing for 17 years prior to. Now, this is the interesting part. So does that mean, so you just said you're a nurse anesthetist. I said it. Um, so does that mean that you administer anesthesia? Yeah, we do. Um, yeah, we we do labor epidurals and spine and spinals and regional anesthesia for sure. Like it, like literally it's basically, and I, I don't, so I always want to be careful how I say this for political reasons. Of course. The MDs we work with. Yeah. So let me just quickly give you the difference. Yes. Uh, a, a nurse anesthetist or anesthesiologist um, becomes an RN and then they uh, work in a, usually a critical care setting for two years yeah. sometimes OR, but really I feel like the best thing is a critical care setting. Yeah. And then they apply for an anesthesia. It's basically, now it was a master's when I did it. It's a doctorate program now. Right. And it's three years. I think it's three years now. Um, and you are you go through the didactics of pharmacology, physiology, all the things um, in a more in-depth level than you did in nursing school. And then you are clinically trained to administer anesthesia. And the, it can be done, it's done in many different models. And I've worked in, I, I live in Arkansas in the USA, and I have worked in places where I was the sole anesthesia provider. Wow. Um, now I work in kind of like a, a, a team model where I have a, an anesthesiologist. I'm like, hey, what do you think about this? Yeah. Um, maybe I don't really want to do this case. Yeah. Um, you do this case or, but it's, we we like right now I'm working at the VA and our anesthesiologist is out of town. So we're just doing our own thing. And mostly yeah. that's what we do. Um, so we do everything. Uh, we usually get paid less than doctors. Um, <laughs> of course. But, but yeah, but we are like literally in the U S I'm not sure what it is worldwide, but like several years ago when I was in probably 10 years ago, I don't know. I don't know what, where the statistic came from. Yeah. But like 66% of all of the anesthetics that were provided in the U.S. were by nurse anesthetists. Oh, now, gosh. people don't know that. People don't know that because a lot of times they'll have these models where the, um, the pre-op is done by the anesthesiologist. They meet the anesthesiologist and then they get Versed, which is an amnesic drug. Yeah. And then they go to the room. They have no idea. Like, I mean, we'll meet them, but they're like, oh, yeah, my anesthesiologist was great. Yeah, he was checking his stocks. OK, like that. I'm really going to get it shot down <laughs> politically right now. Yeah. But, but I mean, like I work with a like I work with an amazing anesthesiologist that like I have mad respect. So I'm, I'm kind of joking. But but yeah, no, but you, you can't, just give me two seconds and close this door. So sure, I'm sure. Um, sorry about that, people. It's a nice little real bit of life thing there for you. Oh, it's um, all good. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I can understand, like, because you do, as a nurse, and when you up upskill, um, especially if it's within, you know, or in, an, in alignment with, say, a GP or an, an anaesthetist or, or a specialty field, there is an element of... Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess it's the hierarchical uh, 
particular area, isn't it? That it's like, well, you didn't do, you know, you know, this, this, and this. But at the end of the day, like I, I mean, I became an enrolled nurse here in Australia first. Um, went off to start. I started my registered nursing. So I transitioned into registered nursing. Decided I really didn't want to do it anymore, and then went into behavioural science. Um, but it's it, it is a very hierarchical structure, isn't it? It's like yeah. Yeah, it, it really, and there's so much, it's so interesting, the political aspect of, so I work with, um, so there's, so, I, so I'm a type of advanced practice nurse is what yes. they call it here. Yes. I don't know what they yes. call it. Yep. And so we have gone on to do training, you know, specialty training. Um, and it's so funny that the, the regular nurse practitioners or advanced practice nurses in a lot of, like where I work in the VA, they've all they've all become be licensed independent practitioners which means they don't need a doctor to sign anything or whatever yep. and the our lobbying the anesthesia the asa the the whatever the anesthesia yeah. thing is they lobby so hard against it that that we just have not been able to to bust through yeah. um, like a lot of states in the u.s are totally uh in uh CRNAs, which are certified registered nurse anesthesiologists, yeah. Yeah. are totally licensed independent practitioners. Yeah. But I live in a state where it's just been, it's it's about like it's a it's a like who can raise the most money and make the most noise in Congress, you know, or, oh, or the yeah. Senate or whatever. Right. So it's really interesting. And you know, I'm not like I'm on my way out, so it's not a battle that I'm not. It I don't matter. care. Like I've done. Like, I've, I don't care. I don't have an ego about it. Like, I will be <laughs> medically directed if that's what you, I just want to do my thing. And, yeah. you know, and so it's, but it's really interesting. It's a really cool. Yeah. Like, really wanted to study it and get into the psychology of it. It's like, oh my gosh. Oh, it's, I know. It's, it's fascinating. It, but I don't really care either way. I, no. Like I said, I want to be really clear. I have, uh, um, I have mad respect for, physicians that went through medical school and the rigors of that and then went yep. through their path but I also have respect for people that that have gone a different path yet they do the same thing yeah yeah I think they do it really well 100 percent. that's the same over here in Australia um with enrolled nurses and registered nurses it's no different we, we actually learn everything the same it's just the hierarchical structure um and um the pay scale and all you still know every single thing but you in order to be paid the next level you've got to get that extra bit of um certification and all you know yeah. and it, i find it yeah. quite strange because it's like you know enrolled nurses make the best registered nurses over here i believe um because we, we've got that practical structure behind us plus the education and all and and it's like you know when you go off and go become a straight anesthetist or a straight GP like or a straight registered nurse whatever you know it's a straight line but it's yeah it's such a it's a strange dichotomy right and it, is, said, it is who it cares is. just who cares <laughs> the day, are you being safe yeah are you loving on your patients and getting yep. good outcomes and that's, that's, that's yeah. really that's really the bottom the bottom line I so, love yeah. that um okay so what inspired you to become a nurse those many years ago oh this is a really this is a long long story that I can make pretty short yeah. um okay. I actually uh, I, I actually did a talk on this on like it's on Amazon Prime and I would like like it kind of ties into what I'm doing now yeah so um I really loved science all my life like I was a science geek um, but I was also like an artist and like, I really wanted to do art. And when I was in college, I was an athlete, an artist. Like if I could have just combined all those things into one thing, I would have been like to the moon, but yeah. sorry, my eyes are water. But You're right. um, so I really wanted to do art and my parents, my mom, it was really my mom. She's like, really, you need to stick with the sciences because you got to support yourself. You got to get a job. And like, how are you going to make money as an artist? And I'm like, the self-doubt started, the thing, all the things. And so I'm in my fourth year of college. I've had like probably an equal amount of art and science. I had thought about going into like biology. I thought I actually thought about going into uh, medical illustration. That's basically 
the the didactics of that are like you might as well go ahead and be a doctor because you're two years with medical students and then you're drawing and I'm like why am I going to go make I mean why am I going to do that and and also just be really constrained with your art so um so my fourth year I was like oh I guess I'm just going to go to nursing school because my mom was a nurse and Ah. I'm like but (laughs) but the plan was I'm going to go to nursing school because like there's so much flexibility with nursing all this I'm like okay I'm gonna go to nursing school and then I'm gonna go make like I'm gonna be able to go back to art school and the long story short is um you know life happened (laughs) (laughs) marriage a kid you know debt the house the car the all the golden handcuffs and um, (laughs) I became pretty miserable and like there's a whole like life there's a whole story that I could really go into um it's it's out there the story's out there I won't I won't I won't do that but um eventually after I went back to art school best time of my life Mm -hmm. and um what happened it was like an awakening for me it was like oh my god my soul is awake this is this is like there's so many you know more opportunities for me I you know, discovered that I was like this creative problem solver. And I actually took that back to, you know, my home and my work. And I'm like, I can solve any problem because I like, it's like a prop, like it just opened up so much, but I couldn't ever figure out how to make the jump from, you know, nursing to art financially. And so after going, you know, finishing my degree and I applied to a couple of schools that just weren't really a fit. And that's another story, but, um, <laughs> uh I just decided you know what I just I can't work I don't want to work another 20 years as a as an RN I I, like I don't I never loved it um mostly it didn't have to do with the job the doing it had to do with the administrative stuff and the you know anyway uh it had to do with all that so uh I applied to anesthesia school and I'm like I had you know I like okay I'm just gonna do this and so (laughs) you know, 15, 15, or I don't know how much years later, that's where I am. And, you know, it's so cool because there were so many days that I dreaded going to work as a nurse. And I can say most days I'm excited to jump out of bed. I really like love what I do. I mean, I get to spend time with one person focusing on one problem, one anesthetic and people don't want to have surgery without anesthesia. Oh, so nice. they're very appreciative of you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's kind of like the good, the good part of that. So anyway, that's kind yeah. of like how all that. It's interesting. Um, you touched on quite a few um, subjects that I've, I've actually noticed a, a distinct pattern amongst nurses. <laughs> and it's that we have, all of us have got very creative sides to us. We've got, it's almost like, it's almost like we suppress that part of ourselves for a little while in order, as you said, the golden handcuffs and stuff. But then it's almost like, and every single nurse that I've spoken to so, this far have all said, I experienced an awakening and realized that this, I couldn't do this anymore. And, yep. you know, that I wanted better for my life. And, you know, and I had to be brave, but also didn't know how to make that transition. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah. and I actually find that nurses make the best entrepreneurs because, We've got that, it's a very interesting skill set that uh, in, in leadership. So many, oh, I just. The, there's like, so much, there's so much leadership and there's so much also just like, you know, you have to like look at a patient, like there's so many unconscious things when you're looking at a patient that you don't even, like you can't even put your finger on it, but yeah. you're like, you're problem solving, like you're getting like these 11 or 40,000 bits of information and you're like, I don't even know what it is, but there's something wrong. This patient's yeah. going to crash. Yeah. Or you're just so, and so maybe that's it. Maybe it's it, just like, you're so hyper vigilant and observant yeah. about things that I think that's probably part of it's it. Too. The, you know, it's the nurse's intuition, you know, it's a part of the MET criteria over here in Australia. You know, nurses have a very honed in sense of intuition of something's not right. And you look at it holistically, observantly. And if you can apply that to business and to leadership and all that other stuff, it's like, whoa, like untapped potential. There's a whole yes, untapped market potential out there for a bunch of yeah. nurses who, you know, 
who, who want to pivot, they can go off and become business owners and because right. they've got that skill set, this unbelievable skill set that, yeah, it's just I'm, I'm seeing it slowly emerge and maybe it's because I'm doing the same thing myself, you know, doing the slow unhooking, et cetera. Um, it's funny that you mentioned art because I worked with a registered nurse who um, in, in a uh, day surgery unit and she had been nursing for a number of years I think it was about 15 years and she and you could see she was just walking in and she was you know knuckles were on the ground and she was just like and we were watching the patients going through like a conveyor belt system and I just yeah. said to, and I said to her I'm like oh I feel like I'm just doing, I'm, I'm standing at a supermarket and I'm just sort of scanning these patients, you know, yeah. like, yeah. And anyway, she pulls out, she pulls out this um, art book. She, she, oh my God, Steph, she, this woman was an amazing, or is an amazing, amazing artist. And she kept bringing her stuff in. I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, what are you doing? Because <laughs> you could yeah. see her face, you could see her face light up. Anyway. Yeah. She goes, oh, I'm too old to go back. She goes, I'd love to do, if I had have had my time again, I would have went to art school. Yeah. And, yeah. and I was like, do it. That's good for you. Good for do you. It. Yeah, do it. Absolutely. And she did. She went off and did oh, her, so she was cool. in her early 40s, I think. She went off and did her fine arts degree. She's got her own gallery. And oh, tell me her name. I love to connect with nurse artists. I, yeah. I really, I mean, you have to do it right now, but after the. After yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying yeah. I can't even remember her last name to be honest. But if it that's comes all good. intuitively, if it comes to me, I'll be like, right, and then I'll email yeah. it to you. But yeah, sounds good. Same, same thing for her. And and you, and when she finished and she was doing her, you could see her face had changed everything. It was almost like she came back to life. Yep. You know. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is that. So, so. I kind of fell into business about four years ago through network marketing and that was not my thing, but yeah. what it did was it got, it opened my mind to personal development and like online marketing and all, all, all these Me things. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's so cool. And I'm so, but like last year I was like, I had clients, I was teaching them, you know, how to like take their process and develop this like system and bring it online. I'm like, this isn't, this still isn't what I want to do. Like, this isn't it. So um, I actually uh, stepped back and I started like journaling and doing all these things. And this is how I came up with like the, the genius identity code. And it really started with a couple of questions. When I was in art school, I could, the, the thing is I loved, I couldn't wait to get out of, when I woke up, I was like, oh my God, I can't wait to get to the studio. And I knew that my life, even as a, you know, even doing anesthesia, I mean, I like it, but it's not yeah. like, oh my God, I can't wait to get in that <laughs> OR and like put somebody to sleep. I yeah. Mean, <laughs> and so, but, but what if we could have that in our life? What if we could wake up in the morning and go, oh my God, I can't wait to go write my book. I can't wait to go coach people to live their best life. I can't yeah. wait to get into the studio. And yeah. we can do that, yeah. but it really goes back to, you know, finding out what our true gifts are and tying that usually to a purpose that's where we've overcome some challenge or yeah. transformation or yeah. life experience that means something to us that we want to give back to people. Yeah. And then finding out how we can bring that into the world. And so that all occurred in like the last year after all of these transformations and, wow. and periods I've been to. And so that's really what I'm trying to get out there right about now. About showing up for yourself, right? I think that's, um, I, 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 I went through a very similar experience with you, like as you did, you know, I sort of tried out a little bit of network marketing and just to find out how business really worked and sort of ended up doing um, like leaving, transferring all my nursing stuff over to a commerce degree majoring in behavioral science so still understanding the nature of business but more so the psychology behind it and when I when I started to learn about that I was like oh my god my whole mind just went Poof. <laughs> you know like what's possible and then I um you know had a couple of friends who were nurses and they're like oh you know again dragging their knuckles I'm like oh my god you guys this isn't like everything you know I'm like I'm getting super excited and they're like who is this woman and where did she come from 
That's so cool. That's so cool. Um, I'm the same as you. I kind of, you know, I want to empower other people to be able to, like, you don't have to leave nursing if you don't want to, but fine. Nursing can, unfortunately, suck out the joy of, of, of uh, our spirit sometimes. And I think if, if you've got something outside of yourself, it's not just about your kids or your family or you've got something that makes you excited, then yeah. it gives you some sort of sense of fulfilment that's outside of work, right? Yeah. And you don't have to like, I mean, you don't have to be an entrepreneur. You don't have no. to like your nursing job. It can still be your support system, yeah. but it's so important to find that thing that's going to light you up and yep. it's going to fuel you through. Cause I mean, I don't even think it's the work. I don't, for most people, I don't think it's, I think people go into nursing for the right reasons. Yes. They love yes. helping people and they love interacting with people. And like, I mean, I, I get that. I love that part of it. That's the best part of my job. The yeah. part that's not the best part is like, oh, you got to like put these more timeouts and these more checklists and these more things. And it's like, I don't even have time to like take care of the patient. And so yeah. it's all that stuff that just keeps adding and adding and adding. And, and I feel like that's where, you know, mm-hmm. people get burned out. And for me as an RN, it was always like these people that aren't in the trenches have no clue what we're going through and yet they can just sit there and tick off these things they have no compassion for what you're going through and it's like they just try to get a little more out of you a little more yeah i like to squeeze a little bit more yeah Yeah. and you're right i I mean even for myself just before i left um you know a lot of the a lot of the patient contacts sort of started to get ripped away from us and it was more administrative stuff and i'm thinking you know i I went into nursing because i love people and I love mm-hmm. helping people yeah. and I love talking to people. And then obviously, uh, so when I left, I went through a divorce and all this other stuff. And I was like, I miss what I miss about nursing was talking to people. And that's why I started the podcast. I was like, this is going to help me to get through a bit of a tricky time with COVID and all this other stuff. And it's reignited that excitement with it for healthcare again, but also for people, helping yeah. people and, and se- helping people to see their worth and things like that. But you're right, the administrative stuff, yeah unfortunately yeah. it can yeah. and, I mean I know it's I know it's necessary I necessary yeah. I mean I know it's part of it but who it's the part that just like it's yeah. like when morale's low it's just like can they not see if they could just change their perspective or, yeah yeah um yeah. that they would just help so many different people like it would just yeah. lift everyone up and it's just, just they get, I think people I think administrators get so tied into you know, they're, you know, blinders of their viewpoint and they don't really know what's going on in, mm. in the patient care. So yeah. it, it can be, it can be hard. It's annoying. Um, so with regards to stress levels, um, so we've kind of touched a little bit on, but what sort of, what would, what did you used to do and what do you still do to manage your stress levels? Oh, uh, well, a great, this is a great question. Um, when I was a nurse, um, I, my stress level was to go home after work and drink every day. <laughs> and uh, Yeah. And so that became a problem. And when I, when I changed that, that's when I went to art school uh-huh. and now, um, you know, I go through these periods now where I'll be, <clears throat> pardon me, I'll be so busy, you know, doing the entrepreneurial thing, doing the work thing. And then I'll realize that I haven't like, oh my gosh, I'm just like burnt out. Yeah. And so this, I just got back from Dubai a couple of weeks ago. I like, I don't want to be on social media. I'm just taking a break. I'm like doing a recharge and, you know, I wish I would do better of going, okay, you just need to get, like, I'm getting in my studio. I'm like trying to be, you know, what creative things can I do? What, what do I need to do differently? But like, I do realize that like self-care, the, the thing of like, you know, like this weekend, I just took it easy. I'm like, if I need to sleep in, you know, I mean, I really feel like for me, it's like two or three things being aware that I'm running myself in the ground first. Mm -hmm. Uh, Secondly, doing some things that I love, which I am an athlete. And so getting on my bicycle is like crucial working, moving my body and also spending some time creating something. So, and then connecting with friends, which I will just go into my you know, dry, like I'm a very driven person. I'll just do, 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 do. And I'm like, oh my God, I haven't had coffee with 
Desi, yes. or, you know what? Yes. So that kind of thing. I yeah. think I think um, as nurses, we are kind of driven to become that way, that sort of do, do, do. It's almost in, in like sort of driven into you to become that way. And then, which is probably why we make good entrepreneurs or something, because we're so used to being, you know, go, 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 go. But however, as you just touched on, if, if you have the awareness of we need to incorporate, you know, things that make us feel good, like art or writing, for me, it's writing, Mm -hmm. Um, getting out in nature going for walks as you said having a coffee with a beautiful friend or just and making sure that as you said the awareness oh shit I think I've just been and I did this funnily enough I just I did the same thing the last um the last week actually because we've got Easter holidays and my daughter's off was off um for school and I took that week off and I did nothing and it was pretty good it was perfect right it's so good and the, and the important thing is like to do nothing and not feel guilty about it. Yes. Just, that's the, that's the key. Cause I've done both where I'm like, Oh, I should be doing the, like the should start yeah, the, no, should. the shoulds out, like just do nothing. It me it like, if you're doing nothing and that's what you need, yeah. then you know, it's just being still and like, you know, and some of the best creative ideas come to me when I've like stepped back and I'm like, yeah. okay, well, I'm, like I'm burnt out I'm just gonna like I need to take care of myself so yeah a hundred percent and it's recognizing it and having that conscious awareness I mean I yep. uh, lately I've been going on walks where I don't have music in mm. and it's and it's become a meditative process and it's like and then I get like nice little downloads and I'm like oh hello yeah. I mean, this is I love this because I really love that when I do it and I don't do it enough yeah. And, you know, some of the, some of the best writers in the world that like you'll read about, and that's where, what they would do is like, they would just like walking was their thing because they would get these downloads Yeah, and it's like a meditative experience, like clearing your mind, getting in yeah. touch with nature. And then like, oh, the ideas start coming in. Yeah. It's kind of oh, like yeah. when I just come in the shower, like you're in the shower, like, oh my God, I gotta go write that down. You know? Yeah. So. I know it's so cool I love it I think everybody should do it like sometimes I'll be <laughs> sometimes like I'll in my mind I'm like talking to myself and then it'll be sometimes it'll be a recurring um theme and I'm like okay I've got to take action on that you know and I, right. I do think that if you're always connected to social media and music and blah blah blah, blah, blah and everything um then you can't get those downloads and hear as I call it the silent whisper you know the silent whisper that's like hey you've got to slow down or hey yeah. you need to go and write that article or hey you need to drink water you know that sort of stuff yeah yeah I mean I really feel like and, and this is kind of like the spiritual thing yeah. that the universe really will tell us if we will be aware and listen and give it space but we're mostly especially with this pace and social media and all the things yeah. is we're always feeding and listening and we don't have time to like have the space to listen. Yeah. And so if we do give ourselves that space, hmm. then the universe is going to guide us and give us that, you know, yes. those I love that massive yeah. believer in it. Massive, massive believer in it. Okay. Um, have you ever experienced, well, you did kind of already have um, said that you've experienced burnout. Did you experience burnout while you were nursing? Yeah. So um, really, uh, I, yeah, a few times. So yeah. when I went, like I pretty much, when I got into nursing, it was like, well, this is cool. But it was like, I, it wasn't my, like, I'm not like, this doesn't feel right. And like mm-hmm. within the first year, yeah. I started thinking about other things, but then I just changed. I pivoted jobs. I went into ICU. I went into this. I'm like, oh, this is cool. So it would like, you know, change my, like, kind of like, you know, excitement level. And I would yeah. learn something new yeah. and I did that for a while. And then I'm just like, oh my God, this is like not my life. I don't want yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I didn't make, you know, I, like, I did this habit of like, just, you know, drinking after like partying or whatever after work. And when that became a problem, that's when it was like, okay, wait, wait a minute. This is like, you know, something needs to change here. Um, and that's when, you know, I started like seeking more spiritual stuff, like going back to art school, all that. Now there've been a few times as, um, 
you know, is a, is a nurse anesthesiologist that I've experienced burnout. Yeah. Um, you know, I was in a job a few years ago that, um, that was just, the call was just brutal, <laughs> and, you know, and so, you know, would work 24 hour shifts and I just, you know, that kind of thing. Um, my call now is, is although we take call, it's usually not like that. Yeah. And, um, most of the time, I mean, I, I'm in a really good place with, mm. with my job right now. Mm. So, mm. and I'm also very aware that I need to take care of myself. I'm like, yeah. I'm being, like sometimes I'll forget and I'll get into this feeling of like, oh, I don't want to get up or I don't want to do this or I don't want to that. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> you know how, like, like re refocus your perspective, take care of yourself. Everything's fine. Just like, you know, um, really take, like really taking care of yourself, like mind, body, spirit. It's just yeah. like, it's not one thing. And for me, it's mind, body, spirit. Part of that's creativity. And mm. so like it even, some days I'm just like, you know, COVID when it first started in 2020, I was pretty depressed because like, er, like I've been like doing all this stuff and then boom, everybody's like terrified. So I was, I felt isolated and I was in this place where I was just like, I don't like, what is wrong with me? Mm. And one of my friends was like, have you been in your studio? And so, no, I hadn't. So I, I would spend an hour or so in there, even if it was just an hour or two a week, yeah. It was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Which is something I should just do every day. Like I can yeah. go draw for 30 minutes and it's, it just relieves everything. It's like, this is like where I should be probably all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, but it's, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, for me, it's writing. Like I, I could spend hours journaling, like hours and I have caught myself doing it. And even through COVID and like, I went through a divorce and stuff at the start of COVID mm. and, and the, the one thing that I was able at the time, the only thing that I could do was journal and walk mm. <laughs> and, you know, do all those other things. I mean, even through my burnout, I was the same. Like I, I used to drink too much and I was like, what the hell? And I remembered I went to this recovery program because I'm like, this isn't right. Something's not right. But I didn't know that I was burnt out. And there was a whole bunch of healthcare professionals in there. And I'm like, then I, and I only found out about the burnout stages just recently. And like, you know, one of the stages is, is um, addictive behavioral um tendency so pick your pick your addiction and mm -hmm. I was oh like, yeah oh my god so that's why because I remembered at the time I'm like oh I don't even really drink I'm not a drinker why the hell yeah. am I you know like but it was just easy because it's there it's on the way and you're like oh you know yeah this will just make me feel better for a few oh, minutes yeah no like, and it oh, doesn't it just makes the body worse <laughs> yeah but um but yeah as you said you know, for me, it was tapping, what ended up helping me to heal from it as well was, uh, you know, tapping in my spiritual side. I learned Reiki and sort of doing body work and getting creative and re writing again and mm -hmm. sort of processing everything that was coming up. So I think it's super important to incorporate the mind, body, soul stuff. And yeah. I tell that to everybody. I'm like, you can't just have one section. You've got to have the whole lot. Yeah, you know, one of the one of my favorite exercises, which which I actually haven't done this in a while, I probably should do it, is like <laughs> to draw the pie chart. Yes. Where where it's like, you know, family finances, you know, all the, you know, yeah. whatever. I, I can't even remember. Like family finances for, for every family. part of your life, you know, creativity, learning, yeah. education. And like, where are you spending all your time? And like I've had these times where it was like, oh, it was all work yeah like or all work and exercise but like not, no family no yeah. <laughs> like, okay yep. so it's it's a really good checkpoint to do to go if you're, especially if you're feeling off to yeah. just do like to take a quick checkpoint of all these different areas yeah. to see if you're like spending all your time yeah, I mean we can it's so easy to get out of balance I always like to use um you know for me it's it's um you know sports and athletics I'm a cyclist I don't like to stretch like my back's been hurting. Like, I'm just like, you know, you're working this one muscle group and I'm like, okay, I got to start doing yoga again. And it's like, wow, if I could just make it, I wish I was I, like, I'm not, I'm like, I'm not that good at like keeping all these things level. It's like, yeah. usually something is like off and I'm like, okay, you got to go back over here and do this. I wish I could just like, I had this routine where I just do all this stuff and everything was perfectly balanced and yeah, no. <laughs> it's just not, but that's no. just, that's okay. I, it, and I don't even think it matters as long as you're aware, oh, yeah. you, can, you know, that you can like, okay, something's off. 
yeah. before you dive into the dirt and you have into an the burnout or, territory, yeah. like a burnout or whatever. So yeah, I hundred percent agree. Um, yeah. Have you got any funny nursing or trauma stories? Like I love a good funny nursing story. There's heaps out there, but funny or um, like a trauma story that you could share. I don't, I don't. I'm trying to think. One of my favorite stories is when I was um, when I was a, uh, in anesthesia school, and it I mean, it may not be that funny. It's not it's not a trauma story, but it's so funny. I I there was this woman who was talking to the anesthesiologist before her surgery and I was doing another case and I came up and I got introduced as like, this is the, you know, the C, the student, whatever the, I don't even, uh, the CRNA student, the, the nurse anesthesia student. And so we're pushing her off and she was like, I don't want any learners. I told you no learners. Meaning I don't want somebody that's learning what they're doing. I want somebody that knows what they're doing. And so I always use that as a joke with my friends, like no learners. We no learners. learners. Yeah. It's so true yeah. though. Like um, I remember when I was learning how to do cannulation and indwelling catheters and stuff like that. And the, I'm like, there's no way I would have told the patient, oh, I'm learning. Yeah. Like, no. I'm learning. No, I'm learning. I'm just learning how to do this. And it was just, the, like, it was just the, yeah, it was the terminology. I yeah, no learners. Instead of, I don't want a student that, yeah. you know, I, I want, I don't want any learners. <laughs> so that was, just, it's always been kind of a joke, but I, 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 don't, um, I don't, I probably have some trauma stories, but I can't. Oh yeah, no, funny, funny one. That's a funny one. I like that. I prefer that. I remember when I had my daughter by emergency c-section and I was just like in so much pain and I get up on the bed and the anesthetist put the uh epi or whatever the the block or whatever and as I lied down I looked over and I tapped him on the shoulder and I was like oh, good job <laughs> <laughs> yeah already getting relief huh I was just like oh thank fuck that's like oh, yeah you know oh, it's what bloody a- awful <laughs> um what a relief all right. If you could give one or two pieces of advice to someone who's thinking of becoming a nurse, pivoting, or I don't know, what sort of advice would you give to somebody who's been in the industry, starting out, thinking about moving on? So uh, my internet's a little. Can you can we repeat yeah, that? You, I'm sorry, I'm breaking up um, a little bit. Yeah. So just a piece of advice to a nurse who's thinking about becoming a nurse. Sorry someone who's thinking about becoming a nurse yeah. is a nurse yeah a so or, you know yeah so oh there's so many there's so mm. many things um mm. there's so many things that, the way this could go so one of the, I'm just gonna say you know there there's I'm gonna be really honest yeah. there it's been a time in my life where I was like don't go into nursing <laughs> but what it has done for me is given me, you know, a life that I wouldn't have ever probably have had without it. It's, it's mm-hmm. given me flexibility. Um, it's giving me, um, you know, I would have never become like, I, like being a nurse anesthesiologist has given me a lifestyle that I would have never had probably is maybe is, I don't know. I shouldn't say I would have never had, but, but so I, I feel like, you know, going into it with the mindset of like, wow, this provides so many opportunities. There's so many different things that I can do with this. Yep. Not limiting yourself to like, I'm going to do this in nursing because you might start out with that, but it's, you know, there's so many different areas that you can work mm-hmm. there, whether it's in the hospital, in a doctor's office, in, you know, like, you know, like research or like, there's just so many opportunities. And so I feel like going into it with a mindset of like, maybe you get a nursing job and like, this is not what I like. Mm-hmm. Then there's probably something that you can do with that degree. That's still in the healthcare field. And, and that's just entry level nursing, mm-hmm. you know, with, if you want to be, if you want to do heart surgery with, with, you know, with heart surgeons where not where you're doing the heart surgery, but you're taking the veins and you're sewing things up. And if you want to be, you know, if you want to do anesthesia, there's, there's an advanced practice role for almost any specialty. Mm. Um, and so there's so it's so vast what mm. you can do. And, you know, um, nurse, there's some nurses in, 
in the states right now that that are making more money than doctors because of COVID because like they there's such a shortage people are are leaving the nursing field yes. so nurses like good nurses male female whatever are so needed right now and um and I really feel like you know, there's just so many things that, that you can do. There's mm. so many opportunities. Mm. So, um, I, I don't know like what advice except for to keep an open mind yep. and really explore all the, the, the mm. opportunities that you can do, because I feel like I had such a narrow focus of like, okay, it's a nurse. You take, you take care of this patient, but, but, um, but there's just so many things you can do. You can do mm. insurance. You can do, you can do legal stuff. You can be, you know, you can, it's 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 wide open so yeah. it's incredible um the, the the skills i say that too you know i was a bit the same it's like if i ever saw like a, somebody who's thinking about doing it i'd be like don't do it yeah. and then i was like hang on no no yeah and yeah taking a high perspective um right. the, the skills that i learned there were just uh, they're so transferable so transferable so right. and, it's, and it's such an amazing way to develop specific skills and then be, they can be transferred to anywhere you've just got to be you've got to remain open-minded and understand that your specific skill set is actually a blessing and something that a lot of people don't have right, right. exactly yeah. and I, you know I really um I, I think I'm I think I'm the same there was probably 10 or 15 years ago I'm like don't do it and now <laughs> yes. I see people going in I'm like you know they're like I that was like a that was a closed-minded thing for me yeah. to think because my perspective but I just see so many opportunities and and it's so needed we're we're short of nurses because so many people are leaving yeah. um, that we really need people that that are you know they're that they want to to help people mm. but um but they, and you're just, like you said, you're going to develop so many skills, like, and they're all transferable, like leadership, um, oh, people my skills. Um, it's definitely a growing up thing. If you're yeah. young going, I mean, you're just going to like, <laughs> and there are, there's lots of funny stories. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, hilarious stories, if anything. And it builds up your emotional intelligence. It builds up, yes. it builds up not just your intelligence but your emotional intelligence you you tap in you, you start to understand people on such a different level um holistically and you can transfer all of that into other areas if you get sick of one like don't get stuck in this mind frame of you know as you said the golden handcuffs you're not stuck to one area go and try new things right. all the time yeah. and don't be and be okay with that i remember when i you know, wanted to try new things. I had, you know, people, certain people in my life at the time who were constantly questioning why I wanted to. And I'm like, well, why can't I? Yeah. And, and why shouldn't I? You know? Yeah. So, but it, I realize now that at the end of the day, when it's when people are questioning your motives, it's because then they're not feeling brave enough to want to do the same things. So yeah, they, they, it's it's that whole thing of uh you know you've heard the the lobster in the bucket where the lobsters there's one lobster that's about to make it over the top and yep. one to pull him back down. Yes. It's like, oh, it's that's like, how I felt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you've all, you, it's like this, you know, this, and that's why I really believe the, the thing of like, who are you spending time with? Like, who yes. are the, five, the average? Like, oh yes. Yes. So, I, yeah. Yeah. I talk about it's that like, in my book as well, because like in the, in the, in my book, I talk about, you know, do an environmental scan. Who are you hanging out with? Like, if you're feeling stuck, it might not be your job. It might be your environment. Do you need to change yeah. your environment? But sometimes once you get to a certain age, you're like, oh, I don't want to change my environment because this is comfortable. But, you know, all growth changes on the other side of discomfort, right? Yeah, right. So, exactly. yeah. I yeah. Just keep your mind open. Be okay to changes. Nurses can get a little bit scared of change once they've been doing it for a while. But <laughs> Yep, yep. Okay, um, and last question is your favorite form of self care. I mean, you've kind of already mentioned it, like art and cycling. Yeah, I would say um, art, cycling, a good massage. Um, mm. You know, really spending time, you know, with friends over dinner or coffee. Those, yep. those are my, those are my go tos. I mean, sometimes I'll fall into like I just want to chill and watch Netflix. I was and that's okay. Say. And I, and I, for for two years, I'm like, I'm not watching TV. I gotta like 
build this business. I got to go to work. I got to do that. And I'm like, wait a minute. I can watch a show on TV as long as I'm not like spending all my time. <laughs> like, so, yeah. you know, I got into this, like, okay, yeah. I just got to do this. I got so, a bit like that too. Yeah. I'm totally, yeah. I got a bit now. And now I'm giving myself permission to watch a little bit of Netflix here and there. <laughs> yep. yep. Same. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Thank you, Steph, for coming Thank on. You. Thank you so much. It's been so much fun. So oh, it's also, been... it's so wonderful to talk to another nurse that's an entrepreneur that kind of gets it. It's yeah. like, it's a lonely game out here trying to, especially trying to do both. Oh, uh, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, it's like, it can be, it can be fun. It can be scary. It can be a struggle. I mean, yeah. it's reward. It's all of the things, but you know, the, the people that I work with, in my job, they don't get it. They're like, what are you like, go ride your bike. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Nah. So and, and I, yeah, I was like you, you know, you've got to be around people who do get it. And, you know, and I was like you also in the fact that I, you know, it can be a little bit lonely sometimes. And then, you know, and I found that through this podcast, through this season of the podcast where I've had other nurses and stuff come on, every single one of us have experienced the same challenges. <laughs> Which, you know, I, I guess it validates my experience too. And then it validates others' experience. And it right. makes, yeah. So, yeah. and they're like, okay, well, I, I guess everybody feels this way at some point and I'm not alone. No, so. that's right. And you're not, and we're not, we're not alone. And it's so nice. Yeah. So thank you so, so much for coming on. Thank um, you so much for having me. It was so, it was so, it was so fun to talk to you. I know. I, this is the way I felt with everyone that I've had, especially, um, uh, most of the like because I've only been able to interview ladies and you got you guys in the states are just so much fun and you you are so open and honest and I love it and I'm like oh why can't I just like pluck you guys from over here and then put you next to me? <laughs> that's awesome yeah that's awesome. it's, it's it. so great um if you have enjoyed this content please like and subscribe to the podcast Definitely. and if you're interested in more of my work i have a book called the 30-day self-care solution for nurses available on amazon um and if you would like some more valuable tidbits then keep listening to the podcast now but on saying that steph did i say you've written a book too haven't you was it you I've been in a couple of collaborations. Uh, right. My last one was uh, Women Who Boss Up. And oh my gosh, meeting these women was really cool. Yeah. Um, it's Women Who Boss Up with Health Wellness. There's a couple of them, but it's yeah. the health wellness one. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was really fun. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. It was bloody amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. I appreciate it.